What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Lolita Sherrill, also known as Take Action Low. And thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Take Action Real Estate Investing Show. And I, I have to tell you, I have a very exciting guest, Mr. Mark Bloom. I'm going to let him go ahead and just dig in and just share some wonderful information about real estate investing, about the market. But before I do that, I just want to thank everyone again. All of my followers, I appreciate you. Make sure you rate, you subscribe, and you review the podcast, all right? I read all of the reviews, all the feedback, so make sure you keep it coming, all right? And also make sure this is going to be available, this interview is going to be available also on my podcast, so iTunes and Stitcher, all right? So let's go ahead and dig in without any further delay. Mark, thank you so much. Um, I believe that you are a co-founder of Network Realty, is that correct? That's correct, Lord. Yes, ma'am. And you know what? Just go ahead and dig in. I want you to tell uh, the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the real real estate investing business. Uh, so I originally went to law school for something completely different and uh, decided uh, that I wasn't going to practice uh, law, not, not something that I was very passionate about. Um, and in order to buy myself a little time to figure out what I wanted to do, and because we we're coming off the heels of the, the, the tech bubble of 2001, 2000, 2001, um, I took some time and did a master's program. I had a lot of credits from law school, so it was going to take me a year. I felt it was worthwhile to get a master's in finance, uh, specializing in investments. While I was doing that, I was bar licensed, and I had the opportunity to work for a company called Crescent Heights of America, a great developer, uh, amazing developer, had great experience there. Uh, they do a lot of they're one of the best condo conversion companies in the country. Awesome. And somewhere in there, I got sparked on real estate. And one thing led to another. I was still interviewing for legal jobs in a completely different field. And I met a buddy of mine that I went to college with who was coming to Miami to open up an office that did you know, what we do, uh, arbitrage, wholesale, real estate. And um, basically looked at me and was like, look, man, if you're working, willing to work 12 hours a day for someone else, if you put 12 hours a day in for yourself, I can show you how to be far more free than you could ever be working for them. And I was lucky enough to be at a point in my life where I could still take a couple of risks. And so here we are 17 years later. Oh, that is fantastic. Well, I, I have to say this. I, I had the uh, the privilege of being able to meet with you. We actually had lunch. You remember? It was a couple of years ago. That, <laughs> And uh, we just clicked and meshed. And uh, with my company, you know, we do a lot of wholesaling. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we met. And, yeah, I, you we've know, done some deals, I believe. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was about to, you know, you know, share that. And uh, we, we've done some deals uh, with your company and things went well. So, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's been a great, you know, meeting you. And uh, yeah, and I appreciate the business. What'd you say? We appreciate the business. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So okay. hopefully we'll have more coming to you, for sure. Always more. Always more. <laughs> but let's talk about net worth realty and how that came about. Because, you know, I, I've, I've seen you recently. I know we're going in pretty much the last quarter of 2017. I've seen you recently do a lot of uh, interviews. So you've been more visible, which has been really nice, you know, to see you. Thank you. And I that's appreciate you, that. Oh, absolutely. So let's talk about net worth, how it came about, and, and, and you know, actually who you service, what, what you all do. Wonderful. So how it came about, we actually worked for another company that had a similar model to Net Worth Realty. Mm -hmm. um, however, they had a large strategic relationship that was a mortgage bank out of uh, Florida, originated out of Florida. And in the downturn, as the downturn started 2006, 2007, before it hit the rest of the country, as many people know now, it kind of hit the coastal areas and particularly Florida mm -hmm. before it hit some of the other states. Um, this company, for a multitude of reasons, was in a bad spot. As the market turned, they were in a horrible position, uh, and they became very cash poor. Some of their lines got called. Some of their creditors wanted their money back. And uh, long and short, we wound up, when I say we, myself and my two partners, I had an office in Dallas. There was an office in Houston. The third partner was literally opening his doors in um, San Antonio. And so we decided that we felt we knew that Texas was enough of a different marketplace mm -hmm. and we knew there was enough of a, a storm coming that we wanted to kind of batter down the hatches and um, we, we kind of bought out the rights, made our peace with uh, previous ownership, um, bought out the rights and, and changed, changed names, changed business model a bit, uh, did some things differently 
Uh, had some very rough times. We opened in originally in May of uh, 2008. Okay. So Lehman Brothers exploded in October, I believe, of 2008. Yeah. Um, and there was there were several for us personally in our business. There were several very large bumps in the road mm-hmm. between when we started out as Net Worth Realty and when Lehman Brothers exploded. So to say 2008 was tumultuous and challenging year. Um, it definitely was. It was also probably, at least personally, what a large part of what made me who I am today, anyway. Um, so from that, we were born uh, out of that market, and we we hustled. I mean, we we just, you know, looking back on it, I, I, I literally worked, you know, no, no kidding, 18 hours a day. I mean, I wasn't in the field 18 hours a day, but I came home and I had the little, the little, <laughs> the little bar in between the kitchen and the family room, and I basically lived at that bar, ate dinner at that bar, and just worked and, and was constantly in communication, constantly looking for deals. Um, and we slowly built it. My partner in San Antonio decided he was going to open up an office in Austin. Um, when he did that, I decided I would open up an office in Fort Worth. When I did that, the Houston guy decided he'd open up an office in Galveston. At mm-hmm. that point, we had a couple people who were getting antsy and wanted to go open their own offices. And so that kind of started the model of bringing people up through our system and educating them um, and giving them some management experience and then, you know, pushing them out of the nest, so to speak, and allowing them to go. We back their play. We, we set up um, a loan for them. We set up everything, the office, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we go and open offices, help them open offices in, in these other cities. That's fantastic. And I, I love, I have to go back a little bit because, you know, the Please. theme of this so, show is taking action. So you yes. said you lived at your bar, right? For however long hustling and taking yes. action and doing what you needed to do. And that's yes. why you have such a strong business today, correct? Um, I'm a firm believer in the, what I call it's a couple things. Uh, you know, I'll tell people always, there's strength and consistency. Uh, another way I'll say it is, um, you know, people are always familiar with the time value of money, right? Yeah. But for whatever reason, we don't talk about the time value of time. <laughs> but that compounding effect is the same. It has the same benefit. So it's great if you can work 18 hours a day. It's great if you can work 18 hours a day, five days a week. Um, it's even better if you can work 12 hours a day, five days a week for mm-hmm. 10 years. So right. you know, it, it, it's about the consistency of it that wins the day. Absolutely. And, and I'm a fighter. I take action. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't. Love the scrap of it, but I'm happy to mix it up. Yeah, hey, that's a part of it. That's a part of being an entrepreneur, right? Success. Yes, awesome. Yes, We're gonna punch you in the face. There you go. Well, let's yes. talk about this. I've been getting a ton of questions, you know, over the last few months, and okay. you know, with the new administration that we've had here for the last ten uh, ten months, and you know, you got some people that's a little nervous because I know you guys service investors. You help investors sure. buy properties for rentals, correct? As, as well as sure. maybe if they want to buy, fix, and flip, correct? Yeah, I mean, the way we phrase it is, we help buyers, but those buyers are looking to take the properties that we sell them, and they're they're looking to use them in a commercial capacity. They're going to buy, fix, and rent, or buy, fix, and sell. And they are looking at it as usually in some kind of a financial investment as any business or commercial endeavor would be, yes. Absolutely got it. So let's talk about the market. Let's talk about today, right now, because we're both in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. I'm here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, too. Yeah. So talk a little bit about maybe your thoughts on, um, you know, the, the climate. and Because you have some investors that, that are new <laughs> that may not necessarily understand and nervous and they want to wait. What, what, what are your thoughts on investing right now um, in this market, in this area? So, I mean, I, I could, there's a lot of offhand things I could say that might, you know, get people's attention or whatever. <laughs> Let me first, before I say anything, I'm a huge proponent of buy, fix, and rent. Buy, fix, and sell is great. Yes. That is its time. There are times that it's easier than others, but it's always harder than buy, fix, and rent. I don't care. I don't care. Right. You don't want to be a landlord? Great. Hire a management company. You know, you think it's going to be difficult to be a landlord? Wait till you get sued by the guy you sold your house to who doesn't like the way you did the plumbing work. Or Like, there's, there's, there's always, these are endeavors that have high return. There's always a good bit of risk. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily always want to own up to or recognize the risk going into the deal. So I'm a big believer in buy, fix, and rent. Exactly, because it's building wealth. It's, that's how you build generational wealth. That's right. It's also a much lower risk investment, 
with a much higher risk return over the long run. Correct. Okay, you're dealing with a supply demand metric that's completely out of whack. Um, you have banks that are fully vested in leveraging this market and pushing the values, um, and that's that's not really going anywhere. And they seem to be kind of learning from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like when I say that, for instance, you know, we're we're seeing um, a, a lot of these. Um, Older style mortgages are the mortgages that cause some of the issues coming back. But one of the things we're not seeing is the variable rate, right? It's all right. fixed rate. Because if you can get a fixed rate and you agree to that rate, as long as nothing changes in the economy going forward, they're learning, I think, I hope. That's my personal, <laughs> my personal belief. Um, so personally, as a real estate investor who's into the buy, fix, and sell, I'm sorry, who's into the buy, fix, and rent, it's always a good time to buy. Like awesome. When's the best time to buy? Right now. Right now. Absolutely. Or, Gonna, it might not be worth more tomorrow, but 10 years from tomorrow, it's almost always going to be worth more. So it's always a good time to buy. And you never know what the next um, area that's going to pop or change the, the West Dallas or the, you know, um, in, in every city's got their own little L.A.'s experience a resurgence by downtown. Um, you know, in New York, it's Brooklyn or it's Harlem. In, in Chicago, you have so many different little areas that are blowing up. The old meatpacking district is becoming really crazy. So you, you can't really predict it. So you buy and you hold. That's my personal opinion. Is there a storm coming? Sure, there's always a storm coming. Is it going to look anything like 2008? Stop it. Don't make me turn this computer off. There's <laughs> nothing that, you know, and that's what I think a lot of the newer investors Oh my God, this is what a downturn looks like. No, that's what the last downturn looked like. It was catastrophic. There was financial systems failure on top of real estate market failure, on top of loan failure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors there. The banks weren't properly capitalized. We're not in that same situation. We're not in that same environment. Um, it's funny, I'm doing an article for, uh, uh, I believe it's going to run in entrepreneur.com, and one of the things they're asking is, you know, as a CEO of a company, what are you doing to hedge against the oncoming dip in the marketplace, or as they put it, when the stuff hits the fan, right? Right. My whole thing was like, I'm, I'm not hedging for a downturn. Right. I'm preparing for opportunity. Absolutely. Like, um, we're, we're hiring. We're ramping up. We're refining the process. We're trying to make it better. We're trying to, we're trying to be more efficient. We're trying to you know, see where the market is going to be in two years or three years. Because it is, my personal opinion, for the most part, it's going to be fine for the next 12 to 24 months. After that, it gets a little more liquid. And I also think that you're not going to see a downturn, not only like we saw previously in the extent or the depth of 08, it's also going to be far more regional and far more localized. You know, the, the South Florida market has seen a tremendous run up compared to Dallas, mm -hmm. which was already extremely low and has had huge job growth. And so right. there's different things growing on in our national market that are going to affect everything a little differently. But there's always going to be a downturn. You can look at that as something to be afraid of or you can look at it as a buying opportunity. Mm -hmm. I look at it as a buying opportunity. Exactly. And that's how we look at it, too, even with our own business. You know, like you said, you just kind of refine things. You prepare because, you know, at some point it's coming, but you still prepare and uh, there you have it, folks, you know, for someone that's been doing this successfully, but over 15 years, 20 years. Yeah, I started in 2000. The first couple of houses I bought were 99, 2000, right in that range. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that insight. Really appreciate that. Yeah, um, of course. I want to ask you, let's talk a little bit more about the clients, you know, that you guys service. Is, is it more seasoned investors or is it more new investors? Can, can you talk a little bit about that? So it's definitely a balance. Um, okay. I hesitate to say it's 50-50. I think that's a really easy answer. It probably does tend to be more 60-40. I would say that when I say 60-40, let me define the groups. As you call them more seasoned investors, mm -hmm. people that don't necessarily care about my knowledge on what floors they should be putting in or what colors they should be using. They have you know 300 gallons of the two colors of paint that they're using. They've got you know 10,000 square feet of the tile or the wood that they use in every house or or somewhere in that range, and, and they've got a system, and they just want inventory. They just want deal flow. Sure, they're happy for our opinion. Yes, we have other tools, like we have relationships with Home Depot. We can get them discounts on materials. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do for them other than, uh, you know, kind of holding their hand through the process and being a, a buttress for support, just deal flow. And then we have your, you know, Newer or greener investors sometimes have never bought a property before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they bought two in the last 12 months or whatever, and they're looking for more, and they're looking to refine the process. And because of our experience 
um, because we have a, I, I like to believe and, and I like to make sure that we have an extremely friendly process. You know, look, we, we are uh, in wholesale real estate and that doesn't always have the best connotation. Um, given my background and, and my education, we fight to change that. So one of the yes. things we do is we actually go out every year, every property we sell in every market at, at the f- end of the first quarter of the following year, we go and pull everything we sold last year on the MLS uh, address search. And we compare what the properties actually sold for that pop up versus what we predicted they would sell for and how many days it took. Okay. And are there people that get 80, 70, 80% of what we predicted? Sure. There are people that get 150%. Definitely. Um, on average, nationally, our buyers receive over 100% of what we uh, predict the value to be, what we call the NPO, net worth price opinion, what a lot of people refer to as the ARV. Yes. Um, so that that in and of itself goes a long way to show the people who are buying from us that we stand behind our deals. We do all fixed pricing. So the investors who are looking for deal flow they don't always get caught in a highest and best situation. Let me phrase that. They never get caught in a highest and best situation. Right. If there are multiple people that want property, we go to a card draw or a coin flip if it's two people. We try and give the buyer the best chance for success. The newer investors, the newer buyers, they love all those things. But what they really love is our experience and our comfort. The fact that it's kind of like a clubhouse, like not where you're going to come hang out, yeah. but just in terms of knowledge, there's mm-hmm. a lot of information here and um, you know, we have a team. If there's a newer investor and they want to walk a property with a contractor, and they have no idea what they're looking at. We're going to have somebody meet them out there to walk through with that contractor to make sure everybody's being handled properly and fairly, given the respect they deserve. That is fantastic. Those are two groups. I would say 60% are the less, uh, the people who are more professional. Yeah. And I think that's trending up from 50 because, look, uh, in 2008, there just weren't that many people who were professional investors, right? Every year. Yes, yes. Oh, that's great. I, I love the process, you know, that, that you guys have set up. I, I think it's really good, and it sounds like it's being very effective. Um, talk about what motivates you. What keeps you going? Fire. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm a very intense person. I don't know. I have goals. I have an idea of where my company's supposed to be and where my life is supposed to be. Um, I have some people that I would. You know, people are always like, oh, you got to forgive and forget. I'm not a big believer in that. Okay. Uh, I'm a big believer in, you know, I, I don't have to worry about the people who have done me wrong, per se. I still have to do my whatever I'm going to do. It doesn't matter what they do. I have to do what I'm going to do. But forgive and forget, it, uh, no, that doesn't that doesn't work for me. I'm going to crush you. I'm going to <laughs> demolish you. And that is going to push me forward. And it's going to be a mixture of my goals that are pulling me forward. And the fear of failure and the fear of not proving anybody wrong that when I get complacent continues to push me forward after I get a little taste of success. So that's what drives me is, I guess, my fear of failure and my my unyielding desire to succeed and impose my will upon the world. Does that sound evil and maniacal? It doesn't mean to. (laughs) I think it's great. Okay, Um, good. uh, uh, Yeah, you're perfect. So... uh... Yeah, that was off the cuff. So you just you answered it how you felt it, and that's what I wanted. So that's just what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. And, well, and, and I gotta say this: I'm, I'm glad you shared. I think all of us have been, especially in business, have 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 been burned by a partner or whatever the case may be. I certainly have, and it was definitely a huge lesson for me. But just like yes. you said, it it made it made me more driven. Uh, it was definitely a learning lesson to uh, continue to focus on my goals, to be relentless. And uh, when I when I when I have someone tell me no, I can't, or you know that that may have done the wrong thing, um, and it impacted me, you just have that hunger and drive to do greater and bigger things. So I've always yeah. been that way too. So knock me down, I promise you, I'm gonna get back up, even more of a vengeance. So, get back up swinging, Lo. Get back up swinging, baby. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you said a word there, and it resonates with me. Uh, relentless. Okay. My, my Instagram, if anybody wants, is um, at Relentless Real Estate. Love and uh, I'll give everybody a little, if there's people out there doing this right now, go to your web browser after this and go to Relentless.com. And mm-hmm. it's very interesting. I'll, I'll leave it for you for a little surprise. It, uh, but understand that 
there's power in being relentless and being relentless about the details and and unyielding. It's okay if people don't get it. It's okay. It's okay, um, it's okay to want something more than other people want it. Amen. Relentless.com. Make sure you guys go there. And that leads me to, to the last question here, uh, Mark, which I really don't want to end it. I could talk to you for a while longer, but... If, so well, I, I want to ask if someone wants to get in touch with you to work, you know, with your company, you know, an investor. How can they reach out or, or get in touch with you? So any any buyer, investor, or seller, wholesaler, flipper that wants. We built a pretty large tool here. You know, we buy and sell. This year we should be twenty five hundred to three thousand properties. Awesome. So we're we're in fifteen cities. We are on on the web at networthrealtyusa.com. That's networthrealtyusa.com. You can get in touch with any of our offices. And if someone's new and they're looking for a career, we're always hiring. But we are happy to work with buyers. We're happy to work with any sellers or wholesalers, flippers that are out there. Um, you know, networthrealtyusa.com is the best place to reach us. We have a Facebook page, um, Networth Realty. You can get through to me personally. You can get to me. I'll give everybody my email. It's mark at networthrealtyusa.com. Please don't put me on your spam list, but if you need something, email me. I'm happy to help. That's what we're here to do is pass on the tutelage. I appreciate you having me on, so I'm Absolutely. happy to do that. And I actually do um, – I don't run it, but I'm on my Instagram fairly regularly monitoring content and my Facebook. So you guys, at Relentless Real Estate, I'm there regularly. Fantastic. Mark, thank you again. And I'll make sure and provide uh, the links that, that you provided in your email address You know, in, in, in the description around this video. Guys, as always, listen to this again, all right? Share it. And like I always tell you before in the show, make sure now you go out and take action. Take care. Thank you.